subscribe to our channel for latest video series on GAIN, UGC, NET and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Hello people, so we saw about Laplace transform, how do you find Laplace transform, what are the properties of ROC, when is Laplace transform going to exist, when it is not going to exist, what are some properties that we can use, direct formulas and everything. Now we are going to look at inverse Laplace transform. So why are we uh, studying this is, see we, we, we uh, started uh, studying Laplace transform with the aim that our complicated convolution would become simple multiplication operation in Laplace domain. Right, and we said that when we converting, when we are converting the signals in S domain, what is going to happen? System is going to become easy. Complicated convolution has not to be calculated. We can calculate the output of a system using simple multiplication in S domain. Now, when we have calculated the output in S domain, we need to convert it back into time domain, right? We need a signal which varies with time. So, we need to calculate inverse Laplace transform. So, inversion of the Laplace transform xs to find the signal xt is called inverse Laplace transform. So, uh, we are denoting it something like this xt is Laplace inverse of x of s. Right? So, this is how you are finding inverse Laplace transform. Now, there are various ways to find inverse Laplace transform. Okay? We are having the basic definition. We are having the basic inversion formula. Then we are having partial uh, fraction expansion. Then we are having use of tables. Okay? We are having different ways. We are going to look at them one by one. So, first way to find inverse Laplace transform that we are going to look at is inversion formula. As we had one basic formula to find out the Laplace transform. We have one formula to find inverse Laplace also. Okay, this applies to all classes of transform functions that involves and involves the evaluation of a line integral in complex S plane. So, we are using this formula to find xt which is 1 by 2 pi j integration from c minus j infinity to c plus j infinity of xs into e to the power st ds okay so in this integral what what one thing that you have to notice real c real number c the c the c is a real number and is selected such that is selected such that if if roc of roc of x of s is from sigma 1 to sigma 2 then then this c lies between sigma 1 and sigma 2 okay so the evaluation of this inverse laplace transform integral requires an understanding of complex variable theory okay this is going to be a complete complicated integral okay as you can see we are, we are performing this integration in complex variables and generally we are not using this formula okay uh, in finding laplace transform also we saw that we had this basic formula to evaluate laplace transform which we used very very rarely right we do not use the basic formula we have uh, laplace we find laplace transform for some basic signals and then according to according to the operations on the properties of laplace transform we used to find the laplace transform for other signals also okay so uh, similarly for inversion also we are not using this formula this is going to be a complicated integral so we are not using this we are generally using partial fraction or use of knowledge of our basic uh, signals okay so the second method that you can see is use of tables of laplace transform pairs use of table of Laplace transform pair. So, we saw a Laplace transform pair table uh, previously. We saw that what is going to be the Laplace transform of some basic signals. So using that table, we can see the Laplace transform that has been given and according to that table, we can find the inverse Laplace. Okay. So, uh, what do we do? What do we attempt is if we are given some excess, we are given some Laplace transform, we try to express it as sum of different Laplace transforms, sum of n different Laplace transforms, okay, where, where inverse Laplace of these functions are known, where x1, x up till x, n, s are, are functions with known inverse Laplace. 
functions with known inverse transforms x1 t x2 t and so on okay and we have seen that we saw that this in the laplace transform is a linear linear operator lean follows linearity then you can just find out xt which is inverse laplace transform of this xs this is going to be sum of all these signals okay so second way is use of tables now the third way which is most widely used okay this one is important okay this is use of partial fraction expansion use of partial fraction expansion so what are we doing the, in this technique basically is see we've seen that this uh, laplace transform xs is generally going to be a rational function what does a rational function mean it is going to have some factors in the numerator which we are calling as zeros and some factors in the denominator that we are calling as poles right we can express this x as as one function in numerator and one function in denominator which can be further further expressed as product of some factors of zeros m zeros and n poles right now what are we saying is if we as if we use a simple technique based on partial fraction expansion then we can easily find the inversion of xs okay so uh, we've discussed about proper and improper rational functions we said that when okay so first first case that i am considering in this partial fraction is when m is less than n that is when number of zeros is less than n we saw that this is going to be a proper rational function okay we've discussed this before that when degree of numerator is less than degree of denominator we say that the rational function is a proper rational function and when degree of denominator is greater than or equal to degree of numerator we say that this is a improper rational function then first case first case that we can consider is a simple pole case simple pole case so what are we saying is if all poles of xs okay if all poles of xs that is all zeros of dsc one thing one note one note that i would like to say see we're going to use this again and again poles of x of s poles of x of s are are zeros of d of s okay please do not get confused with this expression poles of x of s means that points of x of s with putting which in this expression this expression becomes infinite now d of s we are considering as a separate function okay separate polynomial then d of s has zeros zeros means roots roots of d of s we are calling as zeros of d of s so now these p1 p2 until pn are zeros for this d of s roots for this d of of s and they are poles of x of s so what am i saying is if poles of x of s or zeros of d of s are simple simple means distinct distinct separate okay uh, what do i mean as by simple poles okay i'm defining all these things first so we can use them again and again simple pole means distinct or different poles no repeated poles okay distinct or different poles right then if if x of s is having simple poles or d of s is having simple zeros then what can we say then x of s can be simply written as c1 upon s minus p1 until s minus pn okay if it is having distinct poles that is separate poles then we can just write this x of s as sum of sum of different some of some of different partial fractions like this okay so where these coefficients c1 c2 cn they can be find, uh, find out easily coefficient ck okay generalizing can be found out by multiplying this function x of s that is multiplying the complete rational function with the corresponding factor corresponding denominator corresponding pole and keeping the value of s equal to that pole okay so i'm taking an example to illustrate it to explain this better suppose uh, i'm just explaining uh, how do you do partial functions after that we can see how are we going to find out the inverse laplace 
Suppose we have a function 2s plus 4 upon s square plus 4s plus 3. So how do we convert it into partial functions? Now see, this function, this rational function, I can write, if I just want to write it in terms of its factors, in terms of its zeros and poles, this can be written as 2 into s plus 2. Denominator can be factorized. As we have learned by splitting the middle term, you can see that the factors are going to be minus 1 and minus 3 for this, this polynomial. So I can write it as s plus 1 into s plus 3, right? s plus 1 into s plus 3. So, since these are two simple poles, simple poles mean distinct poles, different poles, right, unique poles. So I can write this function as c1 upon s plus 1 and c2 upon s plus 3. This is what partial fraction expansion is. Okay, I am expressing a complete rational function as sum of two partial fractions. Okay, now I need to find out c1 and c2. So I am using this technique that we have seen here. To find C1, what do I have to do? Find C1 pole corresponding to C1, which is S plus 1. So, I multiply S plus 1 with this complete function into 2 into S plus 2 upon S plus 1 into S plus 3. And then keep S is equal to minus 1. S is equal to minus 1. Now, this S plus 1 is going to cancel. When you keep S is equal to minus 1, what are you going to obtain? This is going to be 2 into, when you keep this minus 1, this is going to be 1 upon 2. That means C1 is going to be 1, right? So, we obtain value of C1 as 1. <coughs> Similarly, for C2, what do you do? S plus 3 into 2 into S plus 2 upon S plus 1 into s plus 3 and keep the value of s is equal to minus 3. Now this is going to cancel. When you keep s is equal to minus 3, what are you going to obtain? 2 into minus 1 upon minus 2, which again giving you 1, right? So when you just perform partial fraction of this function, you, this is going to be 1 by s plus 1 plus 1 by s plus 3. Okay, so this is how we are performing partial fraction expansion when the rational function, when my Laplace transform as simple poles. Simple poles means unrepeated or distinct or different poles. Now there can be a case when the Laplace transform as multiple poles. What does multiple poles mean? Okay, suppose I have two poles occurring at a simple number, sim same number, okay, single number. If ds has multiple roots, okay. Like square root, I have some some uh, factor which has square. So a square factor is going to have multiple roots at the same number, repeated roots. Multiple roots that is if it contains, if it contains factors, if it contains factors of the form s minus pi to the power r. Okay, that is it has multiple roots at pi. So what can we say? We can say that, we can conclude that pi is the multiple pole of, multiple pole of x of s with multiplicity r. Okay, <clears throat> so this function x of s is going to have r poles at pi. Okay, then what do we say? Then x of s can be? expressed as can be expanded as lambda 1 upon s minus pi plus lambda 2 upon s minus pi whole square and so on until lambda r upon s minus pi r. So if if my Laplace transform has multiple poles uh, r multiple poles at pi then we are going to have r mul r partial fractions like this okay and how do you find lambda r minus k this is going to be 1 by k factorial <coughs> dk by dsk into s minus pi r into xs at s is equal to pi okay look at it with an example so suppose you are given a function a Laplace transform x of s which is s square plus 2s plus 5 upon s plus 3 into 
s plus 5 whole square now you have to find the partial fraction expansion of this uh, function okay of this rational function so as you see this function has a simple pole occurring at s is equal to minus 3 simple pole means one distinct pole and a multiple pole or repeated pole occurring at s is equal to minus 5 so now we're going to see both the ways of finding uh, this expansion so what can i say if I just try to uh, express it in partial fraction exp expansion, I'm going to have t three partial fractions, which are going to be of the form c1 upon s plus 3 plus lambda 1 upon s plus 5 plus lambda 2 upon s plus 5 whole square. Right Now, how do you find these constants c1, lambda 1, lambda 2? So we have discussed this already, right? To find c1, since this is a simple pole, <coughs> to find c1, I multiply this expression with s plus 3 and then put s is equal to minus 3 which is going to be s plus 3 into s square plus 2s plus 5 upon s plus 3 into s plus 5 whole square. So this is going to cancel. Now you just put s is equal to minus 3 here. So c1 you are going to get as 2. Value of c1 comes out to be 2. If you just put minus 3 here, you are going to get this value. Now to find lambda 2. Okay. I am just using this formula. Okay. I am just making use of this formula. To find lambda 2, what do I do? <coughs> I multiply this with s plus 5 whole square into x of s and keep s is equal to minus 5 see lambda 2 this this the trick is see lambda 2 is the constant term of s plus 5 whole square s plus 5 whole square is the root that occurred in x of s so there is going to be no differentiation okay simply multiply with s plus 5 whole square and put s is equal to minus 5 when you do that you are going to obtain s square plus 2s plus 5 upon s plus 3 at s is equal to minus 5 so when you do this and you perform this, this is going to be minus 10 so you're going to get lambda 2 as minus 10 now to find lambda 1 see since this has power 1 right this is power 1 that is power decreased by 1 see look at this formula what we are doing is whatever the power is decreasing okay when i had to find lambda 2 lambda 2 means the final power i put k is equal to 0 k is equal to 0 means no differentiation now power decreased by 1 that is i have decreased k value of k is going to be 1 to find lambda 1 i have to decrease 1 from r so what is going to happen to find lambda 1 this is going to be 1 factorial is 1 only okay so i need not write this and one time differentiation of one time differentiation of just just look at this expression every time you have to multiply with the highest power of this multiple pole okay so this is going to be s plus 5 whole square into x of into x of s at what value of s at s is equal to minus 5 now if you just perform this uh, multiplication and you differentiate this you're going to get s square plus 6s plus 1 upon s plus 3 whole square okay i'm just putting in the final results here so here you're going to get value of lambda 1 as minus 1 which means i can just express x of s as 2 upon s plus 3 minus 1 upon s plus 5 minus 10 upon s plus 5 whole square okay now depending on the roc of the uh, this function depending on the given roc we find out the inverse laplace transform okay so uh, right now we've just seen how do we find partial fraction expansion okay now depending on the roc you can just find out inverse laplace transform see why do we need roc is for this expression for this only this much expression 2 upon s plus 3 there are two possible inverse laplace transforms okay one is right sided one is left sided now how do you decide which laplace trans inverse laplace is it going to have either it is going to have ut or u minus t whatever so we decide that based on the roc of the given system okay uh fine see there is one more way of finding this lambda one uh, which is c this this is a complicated procedure okay finding c1 and lambda 2 is easy right these are easy procedures so one more way that you we can do this is once we have find out c1 and lambda 2 
Just keep here lambda one only, and then perform multiplication. Okay, then just perform regular procedure, uh, taking LCM and multiplying, and then compare the numerator on both the sides. Okay, we can just uh, see that also. Suppose we do not wish to find. See, there can be longer expressions. Okay, there can be a cubic root also, right? This there can be a triple uh, pole also occurring. So to avoid that, what can we do? I could have just written this as. S square plus two s plus five upon s plus three into s plus five whole square. I can write as I found s a c one lambda one. I am leaving as it is, and I am keeping c two here. Now, if you just take LCM, okay, or or one easier way, one easier way is just set s at any value except for minus three or minus five. Suppose I set S is equal to zero. If you just set S is equal to zero, you are going to obtain this. Right? Okay. So using this setting also, you can just find out by taking LCM and solving this. So you can find out that lambda one is going to be minus one. Okay. So if if suppose you find this procedure lengthy or complicated, you can just use the simple procedure also. Fine. So this is how we are performing partial fraction expansion of proper rational functions.